Guys, I think I found something so taboo to the cycling industry. I fear for my life. They're watching me right now. It's something that should not exist, but I figured it out. And I need to show you guys before they take me out. Let me show you. It's behind this wall. Hopefully I don't get caught. Oh my gosh, look at it. It's so hideous. Shimano 12 speed. Shimano 12 speed. Shimano 12 speed. Shimano 12 speed. SRAM 12 speed axis cassette. 1033 with a 5236. Oh my gosh. We're all doomed. Ugh. All right, guys. So this is a weird topic in today's video. And I don't know how I feel about it, but I'll go over the pros and cons in the situation. But me and the guys were talking, some industry guys of mine that we talk about uh, from some of my vendors. And we were wondering, I myself have a 12-speed Shimano Ultegra group set on my bicycle. And we were wondering, hey, SRAM 12-speed Axis has some great cassette ranges in the back of their gearing. I wonder if their 12-speed rear cassette, like a 1033 with the 10 tooth being a very difficult tooth cassette, and a 33 giving us more range in the back for climbing is compatible with a 12-speed cassette. This is often known as taboo. I'm going to go over the whole idea of this video behind it. I'm going to test it out as well, give you some riding on here as well. I do have to make some adjustments to the chain because this is not long enough because this is coming from a 1130 cassette. But we'll go over why would you want to do this, pros and cons to it, and also my thoughts on it afterwards. But it actually works really, really well, so stay tuned. So as of right now, I'm actually just using this wheel off of another bike that came stock with a SRAM Force cassette with the 1033, which I think is the most optimal cassette to use with this kind of configuration. Uh, reason for it is because SRAM Axis is the only cassette right now known to have a 10 tooth on the bottom, which is that's your hardest gear to push. So Shimano usually only comes stock with a 11 tooth at the bottom. So on here, you're getting a 10 tooth, which is supposed to give you a higher end gear ratio. Being that said, not only does it have a 10 tooth on here, to give you the really, really high end speeds, but we also have a 33 tooth uh, cog cassette up top here, which gives you a really, really nice climbing gear. Um, a lot of people don't like the front crank situation that SRAM Axis comes with because they're smaller, because they want to utilize this 10 tooth better. But with Shimano configuration for these cassettes or for these cranks, this being a 5236, meshing a 52 tooth big chain ring with a 10 tooth little chain ring should give me about a, um, uh, like a 5411 or 5511 Shimano chainring, and then going all the way down to a 33, uh, 36, that's like running a 34, I don't, I don't, I forget the configuration, but it's, it's like having like a, uh, a, a granny gear, like a climbing hill gear. I'll find out the exact one, but I'm gonna give you guys a demonstration of how this sounds. I did have to trim it from my original adjustment. So the cassette I took off of here, was a Shimano 12-speed Altegra 12-speed uh, uh, cassette. When I removed it and placed this wheel into its place, the spacing was a little bit different. This is a XDR Freya body on here. It's working fine. You've noticed that there is no rotor back here. I just have a brake um, caliper clamp there so I don't squeeze the brake. Reason for that is because usually SRAM disc brake rotors come 160 front, 160 rear, and my Shimano is being a 140. I did not feel like finding a brand new uh, SRAM or Shimano 140 brake rotor to ruin or contaminate right now. Uh, I'm just gonna run it without it and show you guys some footage of me running it. But without further ado, let me test this up and down. So that's the 10 tooth cassette right there. And as you guys can hear, pretty silent. Now, ow, <laughs> only downside not having a brake rotor. Now, I did adjust this before. Right now it's not in the 33 tooth. I did adjust this where I backed off the B tension screw to allow this to go into the 33 and it would, just the cage was extremely stretched. So I'm going to sacrifice some of my money and we're going to put some of the brand new 12 speed uh, Durex chain on here to go ahead and give me a better test result for you guys to see how this cooperates. I did ride this around already outside and I put load under it on the 10 tooth cassette in the back and the 52 on there. Every single gear I was shifting under load. I was not getting any jumping, any hopping. This is a 12 speed chain. Everything else on this bike is Shimano except for the cassette. 
and it seemed to work compatible. And I did vice versa as well on the other bike over there. I rode a full SRAM 12 speed access bike and I put on a Shimano cassette and the same kind of thing happened as well where it worked very, very well with it. You just had to reconfigure the shift to make them um, better aligned. But I would never have thought that. I would definitely think that the spacing would be different or the flat top chain that SRAM always says is proprietary to their stuff and their chains only work with theirs and same with Shimano, there's only works with theirs. Shimano, Shimano, SRAM, SRAM. Um, but this is a pretty good gear ratio that I have. And the only reason why I talked to him is because I was talking to my, one of my buddies who works for a distributor and he was saying that he wanted to make a gravel bike or a hill climbing bike where he wanted that really, really high end bike or a high end gear, the 5210. But he, he felt like that he has a couple hard, hard hill climbs that he would definitely utilize his 33. So he asked me and I was talking about, I was thinking about doing this video before I did it. And I was like, you know what? Let me just make a video on this and see if this works because I have the resources for it. So let me go ahead and throw this chain in there and we'll see what happens. Now, while I'm changing this, let me go ahead and uh, tell you another good, um, another benefit to running this. Let's say you had a Dury group set with a similar situation, but you want to run a SRAM Red cassette, a 1033. Um, benefit is, is that the SRAM Red 12 speed access cassette is about 40 grams lighter compared to the 1134 Shimano Dury's cassette. And it's about 20 grams lighter to the 1130 Dury's cassette. Nothing crazy, but, um, it is nice or another situation is which it shouldn't be this way but let's say you have a sram 12 speed wheel set that for some reason you can't find a free up for to make a shimano and you upgrade from sram to shimano uh this way you can run a cassette with it to make it work now i'm going to talk about the cons as well with this because uh as a bike mechanic i understand the pains that some people have if they start seeing people start to do this and um i just want to put a full disclaimer out there Nine times out of 10, if you brought me your bike and you had Shimano components on there with a SRAM cassette and you said your thing was making noise, my first initial reaction would be, it's your damn cassette, change it back, what the hell are you thinking? Um, but this is for those people who really want that gearing and, um, and maybe are looking to get it. I'm going to adjust this to the best that I can, utilizing the full 33 and also the 10 gear without having any noise and we're gonna take it out on a real world wide, uh, <laughs> <laughs> just like it's a nice real real world ride um but there's gonna be some questions that we're not obviously gonna have the answer to one longevity two how they wear together is this shimano chain gonna wear out faster or is this ceram cassette gonna wear out faster because it's not supposed to be what it's supposed to be on are these pulley teeth gonna wear out faster because it's on there but it really shouldn't because it's still a shimano shimano um these are all things that we don't know i'm still assuming that it's it's chain on crank or uh, chain on cassette so it shouldn't be that different because back in the day shimano and sram 11 speed stuff i mixed and matched before uh it was it wasn't that uncommon for people to have a sram cassette or actually a shimano durys cassette on a sram red etap setup so it's not uncommon for that give me two seconds while i set up this chain and we'll get going all right so new chain is on it goes all the way up to the 1033, or 1033, no problem. Forgot I don't have a brake back there. That's been a really common misconception. I took this outside already and I rode around. It's about to get dark out, so I want to take you guys outside with me to go ahead and feel it. Uh, it shifts very, 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 very smoothly for what I was expecting. Um, really no issues at all. The only thing I could say that it's, it's weird is that in the bike stand itself, on like the ninth gear here, it hangs up going up and I, i've kind of tinkered around a little bit with it i, I want to have more time with it to play with it but when i go outside on it and i go and i hit it hard and and i, I go up and down i shift on a load it doesn't do it out there so i don't know why that is it just might be under, under load but i'll show you guys what i mean so we'll shift up and down here so that's in the 10 right there 11, 12, so maybe like a 10 right here. That one right there. For some reason, it gets hung up. So if I go fast back and forth, it goes really well. I could probably trim that out. Ow! I could probably trim that out, uh, but I want to do this before we get the video out and uh, so I can show you guys how it feels, but I'm gonna keep on going up the cassette. That's the only gear that I get that in the stand.
that, my friends, is a Shimano Crank 52 with a SRAM 33, okay? There's no touching, it shifts fine, it shifts flawlessly. I'm very, very surprised for that. Now let me take you guys outside real quick just so you guys can see it. I also have a video which I'll plug in that I did on a different day of the Shimano cassette on a SRAM rival drivetrain to give you guys a comparison. It is gonna be a little bit iffy because again, I don't have a rear brake. I'm gonna be filming with my, oh, I don't know how, I'm gonna be filming with my left hand. I'll be shifting to this side and then I'll have to stop the video to go around, but you guys will see. All right, so we're out here. I got this whole strip that I'm gonna go about all the way up there. I remember, I'm filming with my left hand. This is my only brake I have right now. This one just has a bleed block in there, so this does nothing, but this controls my shifters, so I'm just gonna give it an up and down shift for you guys real quick. And as you guys can still see, that is my 1033 SRAM Force cassette. So let's go ahead and give this thing a try. I go from there. Oh, before it gets nighttime out. All right, so right now we're in the, let's go up to the upper. So I'm in the 33 right here. Now we're shifting down. I'm gonna try to get to a 10. But you can hear it shifting through all the gears fine. Right now I think I'm in, I'm in the 10 right there. That's a, that's a 5233. Oh God, I gotta hit the brakes right here, but it's shifting up pretty good. Almost at a stop sign, hold on guys. So, <laughs> I know it's really weird, but I mean, I've been riding this thing around for a while now. I haven't took it on a ride itself, um, but it works very smoothly. I mean, it's dead quiet right now. The gears work very nice. As you can see, if I hit the brakes right now, it's gonna do nothing. Very scary, but it works very, 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 very well up and down. Um, but let me go back inside. Let's actually let's do a U-turn real quick. I'll shift up and down before I go on this. So you guys can get a better idea. Go up. So see, it's it's shipped and smooth. All right, to just give you guys an example, here is a full SRAM rival group set, 12 speed axis. Everything stock is a 12 speed axis rival chain, crank, rear derailleur, and the shifters are there as well. On the back here, we are running a 12-speed Altegra uh, cassette. This is a 1130 uh, cassette on here. So we're gonna show you how smooth this runs. All right, so that was one of the most sketchiest feelings ever when you go to grab your rear brake and you literally have nothing, you're going into traffic. But anyways, so as you guys just saw, I did the test ride there. Um, it worked very, very well for what it was. Um, shifting was on point, it went up under load. When I didn't have the phone in my hand, I did a couple of sprints. Uh, nothing crazy hard sprints, but under load, I didn't have any skipping or any popping. This is a brand new chain, a brand new cassette. And this is a pretty new uh, front crank wheel, front chain wheel. That's about only 1,500 miles on it, so nothing crazy. Um, what my conclusion is on this product and who is this for and if you should do this. If you're someone who is just a daily rider and doesn't want to have any issues with your store or doesn't want to have any maybe issues at all in the, in the future, because like I said, I don't have any long-term tests on this thing. I was just talking with the guy and he was telling me to try it out, so I figured I'd go ahead and film it. Um, I would not recommend this for a daily rider because... Issues can arise, or if you do have this setup and you take this to a store, even if it was me, like I said, and you brought this into my store and you're complaining about your gear shift or anything like that, my first uh, initial reaction is going to be to go ahead and make this compatible Shimano with Shimano or SRAM with SRAM. I would tell you, get rid of that cassette and go ahead and put a Shimano cassette on there. Uh, I don't see the full purpose of it uh, unless you're really looking for that type of gear specific ratio. But usually if you are that person looking for that type of gear specific ratio, you have some sort of knowledge on working on bikes or you have your own mechanic who can make it work for you. Or uh, if an issue does arise, it won't be a bothersome to you. Whereas a normal consumer who just rides every once in a while, let's say they want to ride in one gear and it's not working for them and they don't know how to shift out of it, they don't want to manually adjust it themselves. Um, 
that might be an issue. But who this could be for, in my in my um, in my personal opinion, is is someone like I said who lives in a certain area with maybe really really flat flats, and then all of all of a sudden I know where they have this crazy incline climb, because having a 36 on the bottom here, and having a 33 here, you can literally climb pretty pretty much a nice gradient um, and and have no problem with it. And then on the flats, if you want to sprint, this 5210 when I put in there, it had no issues at all. Um, it was it was running true. There was no dropping out. There was no jumping out of gear. It worked very very well. But this is only for a a very few or select few. If you're racing, and you're looking for a, a crazy gear combination. I would still say you don't want to have any. You don't want to leave anything up to mechanical errors. If you're racing, I would still run SRAM with SRAM and Shimano with Shimano. I would not be testing this out while racing, especially if you're looking to win or especially if there's something big on the line or you want to have a really good year. Again, we, I don't know the long term of this. This was just a fun project that me and another guy in the industry were talking about, and I still had a film for him to go ahead and let him know because he was considering about doing it. On the, uh, he had a, a hybrid gravel build or maybe like similar, like a uh, similar bike to an MV Melee uh, where he wanted to have some 700 by 35 C tubeless gravel tires with this kind of gear set up so he can have some uh, gravel riding with that gear range and then have some high-end flat road speed so but it was pretty cool experience i was not expecting the derailleur shifts to be so on par with what sram was for two companies that seem to hate each other shimano and sram um to go as far as you know have the, all these differences and, and uh their own patents on stuff obviously they're two different companies but their shift spots are very identical if that makes sense and um yeah, it's crazy. Maybe we'll see more and more companies. Maybe we'll see uh, one of these companies utilize that 10 tooth because that 10 tooth in the bottom of that topping gear, it is a very hard gear. And you, when I was in that 52 10, and I was just kind of pushing around and went for a turn, it is a very, very strong gear. But anyways, guys, that's going to do it for this video. Again, um, do this at your own risk. This is, again, just me just doing this for a fun video. I do not recommend you go out immediately to go change out this cassette just because you want to. Uh, yes, the SRAM red, red access cassette is lighter than the Durace, but I would still keep everything compatible with Ultegra, Ultegra, and Durace, Durace. That is just my general consensus. Do not drive your mechanic insane and say, hey, I saw this video. I want to change this out. What's your thoughts? Because if you came into my story and did it, I'd be like, uh. <laughs> but thank you guys again so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.